This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me right now is Don O'Connell. He is the president and CEO of Charles and Colvard. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is CTHR on NASDAQ. And you will actually be able to see Don give a presentation at our upcoming virtual event, the Planet Microcap Showcase, virtual happening April 20th through 22nd, 2021. Be sure to register to go and check that out. Don, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Thank you. We're doing great. Appreciate you having me here today. It's great Appreciate to have the you opportunity on. to kind of tell everybody about Charles and Colbard and CTHR. Absolutely. No, look, for me, this is an update, but at the same time, this is me meeting, you know, you for the first time, because we've, sure. we've done a number of interviews over the years with Charles and Colbard. So it's, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. But, you know, for those who don't know the Charles and Colbard story, let's start off first with, with a quick overview of the company. Sure, Charles and Colbard is a fine jewelry company, uh, a globally recognized fine jewelry company. Uh, right now, we currently have two product brands uh, under Charles and Colbard flagship, and one product is our Forever One Moist Night, and the core of the business and what it's been built on over the last 25 years. Uh, we recently in, um, uh, just implemented a new product brand, which is Cadia Lab Grown Diamonds, and we believe that gives us the choice to that consumer now, and it's a great time for Charles and Colbard to be able to capture a greater market share and actually deliver to a larger audience. Very good. All right, now, so as I alluded to, you know, like I said, been talking to Charles and Colvard for many years now, know the story, Moist and I, everything, everything going on there, you know, but th this is our first time chatting, you know, and sure. uh, would, would love to learn a little bit more about your background and how the, the, the CEO and management transition has been. Sure, so uh, we'd like to thank, uh, on behalf of my team, uh, and everybody associated with Charles and Colbert transition has been uh, quite uh, exceptional. Uh, those um, results can be measured. You just take a look at the last two quarters that were reported since the transition. Uh, my prior capacity was chief operating officer. So I have been with the company for five years uh, in the capacity as chief executive officer for the about probably the last eight or nine months. So if you're kind of measuring the company, modeling the company, looking at the transition and what has changed effectively in the business, just look at the last two quarter results. Uh, certainly um, you'll pay attention to the Planet Microcap uh, conference that's coming up with the live um, virtual that we'll have. And then we're about to issue our Q3 results coming out for our fiscal year. I myself have been in the jewelry industry for uh, I don't want to date myself as far as how long, but... Uh, oh, do it. No one cares. It's all good. Date yourself. A lot longer than you've been around, for sure. Uh, you know, not to say anything. You know, today I got to watch what I say, right? But uh, certainly over three decades, um, predominantly in the diamond and gemstone world, in the manufacturing space, that's really where I come from. Uh, you know, with that being said, probably my... Um, most people recognize me from a, a company called the Richline Group or Berkshire Hathaway... Uh, Richline Group, which is the largest jewelry company in the world. So prior to coming here at Charles and Colbard, I was uh, I ran pretty much operations there. I was VP of operations there at the Richline Group, and there, you know, we basically gained a vast knowledge of all the customers throughout the world and kind of what the needs were. And uh, you know, then I ended up transitioning, and getting an opportunity here uh, at Charles and Colbard, and it was a great opportunity. Small company, a great opportunity for me to kind of affect change and grow the business uh, in a real meaningful way. So that's really, you know, it's not much to be uh, had there other than a lot of years in the industry um, in multiple capacities. Absolutely. And, and quick follow-up to that. I mean, what was that like going from, you know, diamonds, jewel, you know, that, that totally different segment of jewelry to, you know, with Moissanite and, and lab created diamonds and jewelry and stuff like that. You know, what, what, yeah. what's, that, what's that change like? Yeah, so that's a great question. I will tell you that we do precious metals here. We do recycled and responsible and sustainable picks, right? So that's pretty much the same. 14 karat, 18 karat of platinum, intrinsic value commodity is there. The difference is, the fundamental difference is, we produce lab-grown, lab-created gemstones. That's really kind of the pinnacle. It's our mission of what we're about and what we do. So there is a difference there. Uh, but I will tell you that, you know, going back, we had a prior conversation that the the audience doesn't really know about prior, but family, you know, I got a lot of uh, riff over the years about, you know, um, conflict, conflict free. There was a certain movie out after watching the movie, you know, uh, I, you know, I was tasked with like, I don't understand you, you, you run a billion dollar uh, organization and the diamond and gem, can't you affect change? So really didn't have much of an opportunity to affect. We started to make inroads there at my prior capacity, uh, but certainly coming to Charles and Colbert, it's a completely different universe. 
right? We had the, uh, the ability to bring uh, lab-grown gems to market uh, for a long period of time in the moissanite space. But now this movement in the diamonds in the lab-grown space has allowed us to effectively, like we spoke before about, offering that consumer that choice, a responsible choice, and also value, price, and quality are all factors there that we have that we believe now we have the competitive advantage. So, you know, am I a big fan of diamonds and do I come from the diamond world? Absolutely. I believe there's a lot of space for the natural mind and, you know, it really is preference, right? And the, the millennial consumer today has different set of requirements than, you know, than, you know, the boomers or than people that are predisposed to wanting a natural diamond. I believe there's plenty of room for all of us, but you know we're just a very small company at its early stages now. I like to think with incredible products and now with the lab grown diamonds, I'm able to tell that through my uh, team and through the marketing campaigns that we have. So we believe we're in a great place. Very good, very good. So since, as you said, you became CEO in May, 2020, you know, what, what was your vision for the company now coming in and, and are you starting to see that vision take hold? Sure. I mean, that's also another great question. You know, part of the challenge was uh, I came in, you know, directly when COVID uh, first started, you know, to kind of manifest itself into something that was going to be massive and a pandemic uh, status. So, you know, really the criteria for taking the job and taking the position was to stabilize the business. Really, that's the first thing. So we had to make sure that we had uh, sustainability and staying power to be able to be in business and not really have any indicators as to what was going to you know, happen during, uh, you know, the kind of COVID or how long it was going to happen. So we made some really, really strategic, hard decisions right out of the gate. You know, we actually sized the business. Uh, we had to reduce staff by about 25%. Effectively, those are really, really strategic things that we did. We had some supply agreements that were kind of really difficult for the business, kind of constrained us not knowing, you know, where that consumer was going to be, how we were going to target and capture that consumer uh, was a challenge. So we had to renegotiate those particular supply agreements and arrangements, we were able to effectively do that. We had to shift our marketing campaigns more to a social, you know, certainly the brick and mortar world was, you know, kind of uh, consolidating and trying to figure out, you know, are we going to be open or the store is going to be open. So we had to really reposition, you know, resources and dollars specific to the e-commerce uh, part of our business. Our business has two segments, our traditional segment, which is brick and mortar and distributors, and then our online, which is more on the e-commerce, um, which is through charlesandcobart.com, which are our own owned property, as well as our dropship partners. So we kind of had to focus there, and we really came out real nice in, in Q1. Uh, we showed a really nice, uh, significant profitable uh, quarter in Q1 right out of the gate uh, from the transition. So that was a testament to kind of the really hard work that some incredible people here at Charles and Colbard, my team. I mean, I know I may sound like I know what I'm doing and intelligent, but we have some really, really talented people here at Charles and Colbard that are um, actually doing the heavy lifting and making me look good. Very good. It's all about the people, right? I mean, that that's what it comes down to. It is so, actually. Yeah, yeah. So then sure. from what so then from what you can tell us, you know, before I let you go here, what, what would you say are some of the company's growth drivers now uh, moving forward? Sure. Moving forward is doing a lot of exactly what we're doing. Q1, incredible results. Q2, incredible results. We'll speak a little bit to Q3 as we continue to, to grow and go and move on. Uh, but we, we really need to do a lot of the same. Uh, some of the drivers are a shift in marketing, kind of doing a mid to lower funnel type marketing uh, strategy that we kind of shifted and changed, which seems to be working quite well for us. Taking a look at opportunities on digital commerce, uh, really just basically just watching the fundamentals of the business, watching what we're doing that's working and look for the opportunities that'll start to present themselves. We have a tremendous cash position now. We have no debt in the company, which is great outside of a PPP loan, which we deem to be forgiven here in the short order. Uh, we have a really nice uh, inventory position for sustainability and growth. So we really got those fundamentals and the foundation. And we believe as the COVID starts to come out, a little bit more and more, we'll start to continue the growth trajectory that we're on. Very good. Well, Don, with that, where can our audience go and find more information about Charles and Colbard? Yeah, so go to charlesandcolbard.com and you can find everything out. You can find from the questions. You can also go to our IR webpage there too as well and uh, be able to kind of find all the information you want and, and any, um, you know, from earnings and press releases and things like that on the company. Plus, uh, you know, Planet Micro uh, will be here and, uh, you know, reach out an appointment. If you want an individual one-on-one, -on -one, we're here to have that dialogue. 
Very good. Don, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Good luck. Stay safe. And I look yeah, forward man. to our next update. Thanks. Nice, nice meeting you, man. Take care. Nice meeting you too.